With YouTube attacking alternative media, please consider supporting the channel via Patreon for just a dollar per month. Link below. Star Wars. Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars. Uh, over the course of the summer, I would say probably the biggest piece of movie news was uh, Phil Lord and Chris Miller uh, being uh, fired off of the, the, you know, the solo movie. That was a big piece of news. And at the time, I didn't cover it right away because uh, I was out of town, but I, I've been following it for a long time. And of course, this last week, we got uh, we got to see the trailer for Solo or just earlier this week. We got to see the trailer for Solo and get an idea of what's going on. And now we're getting a lot more information here, especially uh, why Phil Miller and Chris Lord uh, or Phil Lord and Chris Miller were were fired from the uh, from the project. Now, it says here behind the scenes turmoil for the Star Wars saga began last summer with the surprise announcement that Phil Lord and Chris Miller who were directing the Han Solo spinoff film, were departing the project. Fans were left wondering what caused the departure, with neither the filmmakers nor Lucasfilm giving any concrete reasons for the split, with fans having to speculate on their own. With Solo, a Star Wars story landing in theaters in just a couple months, uh, Lucasfilm president Kathleen Kenny, Kennedy finally shed some light on the situation. Now, this should be interesting because keep in mind that Kathleen Kennedy, I do feel, uh, has lost all control of what's going on over there at Lucas. I feel ultimately she continuously makes bad choices, um, and, uh, with this, with this whole thing coming out the other day about like, uh, DB, you know, Weiss and David Benioff working on star Wars, the fact that uh, there was a big pushback from the social progressives on Twitter about how it's like, Oh, star Wars, so white sort of thing. Um, you know, I feel like she's just losing control. Not to say there shouldn't be diversity in writing and directing at all. No, there should, but it should be merit based instead of, you know, based upon your religion, skin color, ethnicity. Uh, so there's that. Now, she does say here that goes, she goes, I think these guys are hilarious, but they come from a background of animation and sketch comedy. And when you're making these movies, you can do that. And there's plenty of room for improvisation. We do that all the time, but it has to be inside of a highly structured process or you can't get the work done and you can't move the armies of people to anticipate and have things ready. So it literally came down to process, just getting it done. Well, let's kind of read between the lines on that one. These guys are funny. They do sketch comedy. They do animation. They like to just riff and let things go and improvise and see what happens. And that's fine. But basically what she's saying is this, this movie is a, is a, is a, is a production, a full scale, large production. So that kind of, uh, mentality doesn't really fly. Meaning probably that the producers from Lucasfilm that were on set were having trouble reining in the directors who kept trying to make it funny and make it this 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 other thing that they had originally envisioned, um, which would make sense. Would make sense given, uh, you know, their their work on let's say a Lego Movie or Twenty One Jump Street, Twenty Two Jump Street, or Cloud of the Chance of Meatballs. Uh, they're definitely crazy comedies that do kind of experiment with a couple things. Um, but Star Wars isn't really the place for that, especially Solo. And I, I, I was actually okay with them being let go because of that. Uh, but at, at the same time, my, my criticism of Kathleen Kennedy boils down to the whole notion of why were they allowed to do it in the first place? You know, you know their body of work. You know what kind of people they are. What were you trying to do? Now, it says that the, uh, the, duo delivered audi or the duo delivered audiences a Lego movie in 21 Jump Street, whose successes surpassed, uh, surprised many audiences. Lego allowed the filmmakers to concoct anything they wanted with animators who could bring to life, while the comedic nature of Jump Street allowed actors to tweak lines and sequences as they saw fit. Clearly, the massive scale of Star Wars stifled their creativity, resulting in Ron Howard taking over the directorial duties. Yeah, but the question is, how much of the movie did Ron Howard reshoot? There are multiple reports claiming multiple different things, uh, going as far as to say, like, I've heard one that saw, uh, said upwards of like 70, 80% of the movie was reshot. Um, it felt like most of the film was reshot, but at a rapid rate, at a rapid pace, there was a, quite a bit that it looked like, like that looked like it was rewritten. Um, you know, because, uh, you had Paul Bettany come in to play a part, uh, other parts were cut out, you know, I mean, there was a lot that went into this and I don't think we're ever fully going to get the details. Now, uh, Kennedy's words echoed what the filmmakers hinted at following their departure, saying sometimes people break up and that's really sad. And it's really disappointing, but it happens and we learn a lot from our collaborators and we're better filmmakers for it. This coming from Phil Lord, uh, expressed of the situation, saying we're really proud of the work we did on the movie and wish everybody the best. Because this is Hollywood and you're going up against a huge studio that just, you know, basically shit canned you for, for going a, a different direction than what they wanted. Uh, you're not going to sit there and talk a lot of crap because it's only going to damage your career. But I, I guarantee you, we could probably get some insider stories about them really fuming about it. 
So uh, when it was difficult to, uh, while it was difficult to say no to directing a Star Wars film, Howard was initially apprehensive of the situation, saying, I know Chris and Phil, they're incredibly talented guys, but when I learned that this change was happening, it just came in a moment where I was working on lots of new projects for Imagine, and I had not planned to direct anything last year. So then this came my way, I was reluctant, but I also began to feel that I could help. Uh, similar creative leadership issues arose last fall when Lucasfilm announced Colin Trevorrow would no longer direct episode nine with J.J. Abrams taking over the film's development. Now, this gives us a little bit of more insight. It's just, you know, creative differences. We're unable to make it work. We're unable to, to you know, come together to make this project what we want. So they go to Ron Howard, who is a vastly different filmmaker. And that, again, is one of the things that I, I really found to be interesting was you've got, you know, Lord and Miller, Lego Movie 21 Jump Street. They can tell these stories. They can tell these really awesome, visually appealing stories. Um, but they're also really rooted in comedy. So they were taking this 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 tight script, apparently, from Lawrence Kasdan, and they were really interjecting a lot of comedy into it, a lot of improvisation. And and that didn't work out. So they go to So then they just immediately did like a 180 almost and went over to Ron Howard who directs predominantly biopics, right? Like what is honest to God, the last fantasy movie that Ron Howard directed? What would be considered a movie that would be even in line with something Star Wars would be about? And now I'm, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I just, I'm just not thinking of something that's more recent for him, but for me, it's Willow. For me, I think he got this job because of, because of Willow. Right. Willow was a, a Lucasfilm production, wasn't it? George Lucas uh, came up with the story. Ron Howard directed the movie. Kathleen Kennedy was working at Lucasfilm at the time. So I'm pretty sure that, it, you know, and again, I'm speculating. I'm not too sure. I don't have the information top of my head at the moment, but I would say that probably they were involved. And, uh, you know, to an extent. And as a result of that, we've got uh, we've got this. So you've got a, a non-fantasy director tackling a it's kind of like space opera fantasy film based upon what we saw from the trailers. It looks really good. It looks like there's a lot of detail, a lot of good CG, things like that. And it's handled from what appears to be just from the way that the trailer showing us the, uh, the shots there, uh, very cinematic. And that's not something you would have gotten from, from Phil Lord or Chris Miller. Um, what they've done essentially is basically go back to the drawing board and tell us a biopic. Uh, and this is probably going to be the most information we're going to get about Star Wars uh, or Solo un until years, many years pass when one of them finally breaks the silence as to how things went down or Donald Glover realizes he no longer needs Disney and he'll go out to start talking everything again uh, because I feel like Donald Glover is going to be probably the first guy to, to break us all that, give us all that information. But in the meantime, I'm curious to see what's going to happen with this. I'm excited to see the movie. Uh, I still feel this was a huge leadership problem from the get-go, from the offset. And uh, that's why they went immediately to Ron Howard because he's got connections to Lucas. He's got connections to Kathleen Kennedy. Uh, he even said he was working on other things and he wasn't intending on directing. And it was one of those like kind of like last minute phone calls like, hey, would you come help us out? We really need it. And, you know, it's it was probably Lucas calling and saying, like, because Lucas actually directed, apparently, a scene in the movie, um, apparently. And uh, I'm pretty sure it was Lucas calling up saying, like, hey, would you would you help a brother out? And and that's how they got him in. And ultimately, I think we as Star Wars fans. Are better off at this direction than the other. 